Okay, welcome back to another War Tales video. Uh, this video is going to be a continuation of the Hard Hard Spearman Archer Control Party run. Uh, and we have managed to limp through after having a few uh, very close calls in the tomb uh, in the last run, which was very, very fun. Uh, and this run we're going to be doing a little bit of exploring and trying to... Um, achieve a couple of goals at the same time. So the first thing that I want to do is our party is starting to head up towards level 5 where we can start getting some stronger weapons. However, to craft all of the stronger weapons in the compendium, we actually are going to need a bunch of white leather. So I've saved up a bunch of knowledge points. Um, I'm going to buy the Steel Guzam uh, recipe straight off the bat and the Bow of the Brave. Um, I love the name of that bow, by the way. Uh, and then, look, I might get these as well, but these are the main two that I'm going to be focusing on. So I need to collect a lot of wood, some white leather, which um, we, is going to be the aim today, collecting a little bit of white leather. And the other thing is that my characters are starting to get armor with some slots in it. And I've got a couple of characters with multiple armor slots um, that I want to start filling up, because once you start putting armor layers in, your your squad power starts going up fairly, fairly well. Um, so I'm going to try and combine a couple of those today, and we're actually going to go and fulfill a tracker's quest to hunt a ghost pack to get us the leather. That'll get us a little bit of experience, as well as whilst we're at the tracker's camp, we can um, buy or steal some recipes. Um, stealing the recipes leads us into the second thing we want to try and achieve today, and that is earn a little bit more, um, uh, have a little bit more time or more hours spent being wanted, so that our crime and chaos... Um, path progresses so that we can then start getting access to the black market and its agents via the via the bandit camps so we have a few different things that we're we're aiming for um now i think in the last video as i sort of said we've got plenty of cash um so we actually don't need to do these extra missions um i could uh i don't know like it is some extra cash for for not very much but we might actually avoid them just to try to speed the run up and and keep it focused on these ghost packs so let's head off uh now we've got four ponies already um i do actually like running with kind of like mm, more like six to seven ponies um and i'm pretty sure oh no one of the things i thought we had done was save a little bit of wheat in our bags but apparently we hadn't uh so i'm just going to head up to the mill up here where i believe we can get some wheat which will net us a free pony very soon uh, is it from here we can get some? Maybe I'd already taken it. There you go. Uh, we'll steal you. We'll, we'll buy your treasure map off you, sure. Why not? Okay, so apparently I had already taken the wheat from that mill. Uh, so I might try keep an eye out for a little bit more wheat and then we'll go to uh, get a free pony when we can. Hopefully it won't, uh, won't be too long before we can find. I think we need six wheat to get our pony. All right, off we go. Uh, so I'm gonna, as I said, avoid some of the bandit camps and bandit fights that are around the place, and we'll try to stay focused on our on our main goals here. Uh, we do have a little bit of food to eat. Uh, it's mostly meals, so we're actually going to be bumping up our constitution a fair bit here. Um, and I really don't sort of mind um, wasting a little bit of that. Um, I probably don't want to use too much though. All right, good enough. There we go. We'll pay our wages at the same time. And on the trip back up um, past Korsha, I think I will buy a, buy a little bit more food. Ooh, look, we have our first ghost pack. Ah, uh, and you're kidding me. We just miss it. Our timing was terrible for a rest there. Okay, so uh, with the ghost packs, you do need to keep in mind that they disappear at about 5 a.m. game time. Uh, and that is the point uh, by which you need to have engaged them. Um, we will go in and do Maze Farm because there's a couple of um, books of knowledge here. And we can either threaten these guys, which gets us about half of the, uh, the stuff in the house, or we can attack them and get the full value. Um, I am going to attack because I want everything that is here. Uh, there is wheat available here, so we can get some wheat for our pony as well, which is nice. Hope everyone has been having a good week so far. It's been an interesting one here in Australia with some uh, some Corona stuff going on. I don't want to don't want to chat about it too much. I guess everyone's everyone's you know dealing with it in different ways, um, but interesting times indeed. 
All right, uh, for this party, I do want to engage their leader as quickly as possible, um, but it's preferable not to get surrounded at the same time. However, I think we're just going to do it. Let's jump all in the middle. That's nice having a spear there, though. Uh, we'll get him to go over and engage, and I'm sure we've got one pretty strong spearman who can use this to maximum effect. So you can go up there. They're mostly hoodlums other than this poacher. So I'll go try and engage that poacher, and then that spearman will be able to lock them down pretty well too. All right, so let's go get their ring leader engaged. We'll weaken him up as well. And then we'll get our spearman jumping in and dealing some damage too. Now, I am pretty keen to get upgrades for Spearwall, uh, just because it is going to be very nice, and he's going to be the first one we can take out. Might try to take him out with someone else, though. Uh, and then I'll lock that hoodlum down. Um, I do want to get the Spearwall upgrades, which will mean heading to the, the province of Vertrus at some stage. Uh, and I'm keen for that, mainly because I, uh, I do want to make sure that we can... Um, do the ghost packs as easily as possible and uh without i uh, probably could have furied him and raft him and saved a little bit there uh oh and we actually cannot reach this poacher but we will still put him as close as possible and that is fine um yeah so we'll have to head to the the province of vertrus at some stage to get the uh skill books uh, and basically having those pikemen with their upgraded skills is very, very beneficial for um, uh, fighting ghost packs in particular, just because you really want to uh, be killing as many of those as possible. Getting as many shots off per round, that kind of thing. All right, we're locking everybody down, getting them trapped in our barrage. I really do love just how much control this... Uh, this party offers. Uh, I'm actually going to set both of my archers up on an overwatch here. Might knock the hoodlum back because he's already had his turn this round, whereas this marauder is still going to go. And this poacher, um, this our other spearman will deal with. Uh, so I think the pikemen are the first ones that I'm going to be upgrading with the skill books, because uh, pikemen. I guess this marauder will come in and hit both archers, but that's fine. Um, the pikemen, when they get the skill book upgrade, it actually counts as, um, in essence, you're getting a 100% upgrade from it, which is huge in comparison to the archer, where in, you're going from three shots to four, so you're getting like a 30% upgrade. Now, you've just seen when we kill someone, if we have them in a double proc, it does mean that we actually uh, lose a little bit of the, the value from it, but overall it's it's not too big a deal. Um, we may have been able to get that poacher to run in as well, but uh, not too worried. Uh, See, so this hoodlum's going to go, he's going to get shot by Gabna. Um, our raider we can take out easily enough. Let's go and engage this poacher up the back. Then we'll basically just keep our, our lockdown method continuing. Now, I do hope Gabner's going to do enough. He does have Valorous Victory, so getting us a Valor Point on kill as well, which is nice. Um, vicious Shot really doesn't do too much damage. Um, I did think of one thing that I want to do to slightly improve Gabner's build, uh, which I will show you after this fight. Ooh, such a good cutscene. Always love that cutscene. And we'll engage this archer as well, just to get some extra damage done. And we're off. This is, so this is a, a pretty straightforward fight here. Definitely not going to be one of the, the ch more challenging ones that we have today. Uh, first, let's poke you. That's enough, even. And then let's get you on a control area. Uh, we'll do the same again for you. And Wrath only does 16, you got 19. Let's keep you in place. Uh, 
Uh, we have poked him out of combat there, but that's fine. What we'll do is we'll run over and do a shot. Knock him out. Oh, nice. Alright, so Kalik, um, our archer who has Valorous support, what we're going to do is we're going to take the bow off Kalik and... Oh, look, I really don't care about killing one poacher, so I am going to let them run away. Uh, I'm not going to get a bow or anything that I need, so more than happy to let them run. Okay, we'll inspect them all. Let's see how much stuff we actually get. Uh, we do have a lockpick to do. Uh, one other thing I have changed about this... Um, video today and I'm not too sure whether you can hear it or not. I've tried upping the game sounds just a little so that you can um, hear a little bit of what's going on in the game, you know, some of the music and that kind of thing, uh, maybe in the background while I'm talking or in the pauses where I'm not saying anything and, you know, busy thinking or, or whatnot. Um, so if you can hear the game sound in the background, that is great. If not, I will probably listen to the video and see whether I want to increase that volume a little bit as well. All right, so it is really nice taking that fight. A double double work manual for extra knowledge points is very nice. And we've also now, we looted 15 wheat from that. Uh, so we only need six wheat to get ourselves a new pony. So we will definitely be doing that on the way back. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I kind of like uh, listening to the game sounds. I do think the, the soundtrack in the background is actually just really nice. Um, it's pretty soothing and peaceful normally even the the rain and stuff in the background here is it's good i enjoy it all right so here we are at the trackers camp and this is where we get our mission to go and hunt the phantom swarm or the ghost pack also known as um so we take their tracks and we have a chat with this guy down here now this is one of the guys who sells the tanning rack um i'm not overly fussed about um, getting a lot of leather um, and they've got some oils I want the warriors layer and the bards layer now if I do want to steal what are our chances 40 to 100 let's steal that that puts us over which is cool and then I'm happy to buy the last one as well okay so we're going to use all of these uh, and you can learn um, the, the better recipes. We'll um, go and we'll do that. I think for finishing the hunt, we actually learn one of the, the tier two recipes as such. Uh, and we'll pick up that tanning rack while we're going. Um, alrighty. So we should become wanted very soon. And on the way back, we will probably try to take these bandits out as well. Uh, it is heading into nightfall pretty soon. Uh, do we have many tools for repair? We have none. I like having some full armor and whatnot when I'm going up against the ghost pack, at least the first couple of times, because we just don't have many, um, many weapons to, to kill them quickly. Uh, so heading back towards town, obviously we will be going somewhat closer to the guard. And I feel like I'm going to have to adjust our sleep schedule and sleep at a slightly different time just so we can get these ghost packs a little bit more easily. So we throw some wheat in, we get our pony, and we can recruit him for free. Now obviously taking our pony for free is better the more ponies you have, um, because we um, you have to pay more for each successive pony. Um, I'm not too worried, we've got plenty of cash, and I'll just splash out a little bit more on the next couple. Uh, now we have Dutiful, Helpful, Bravissimo, Smartass, and Pony. Now he has Night Vision. Uh, so I'm going to call him Stalker. Give them all a little bit more personality. Uh, there is the possibility that ponies will be in battle at some point. Uh, obviously, they, they do have their, their combat skill, uh, their kick. And if they have a combat ability, for me, that means, yes, you will be in battle. It is just a matter of time. Uh, now, I do have a cook. Fantastic. I can cook a bunch of bread, uh, which I am more than happy to do now. There we go. That'll give us something slightly different to eat. And we'll load in on that. Uh, and maybe a... a... Since we're going to be going up against a ghost pack, I might actually 
throw in some constitution as well. Not too worried about our dexterity, but being able to take another hit would be fantastic. Ah, friend of beasts sleeping near ponies. Atalende, one of our prisoners just got a title for us. I don't know that I'm I'm stoked about that because uh, we can't give our, our prisoners any skill points. Well, I guess Matalende, the friend of beasts, might have to stick around and we'll try to hire her at some point in the future. Uh, she's a poacher. She would fit in fit in well with our squad. Uh, obviously got the, the same skills as an archer there. <clears throat> okay, so where were we? I wanted to switch Calyx bow with Gabna's bow. Uh, so this will mean that um, Gabna is more likely to get kills because shoot deals more damage um, and it'll mean barrage does more damage as well. Um, good for Valorous victory and Kallik who gets victory points just from standing near people can stand near them and push back. So that'll be that'll be a little bit better for the way that we're setting ourselves up. All right, so minor minor improvements there. Always good to make some small adjustments to the squad when you finally realize. I've, I've probably run for, what, like five videos now. God, I'm having trouble finding this. Where is it? Where is it? This is sometimes a problem. These things can be so tiny. You can zoom in on the map a little bit. Uh, it's not significant, though. I don't know that it changes my, my ability to click on small things very much or find small things. All right, so let's head into town. As I said, I want to pick up just a little bit more food and then we will go ghost hunt, uh, ghost pack hunting. Uh, I feel like the party will handle it pretty well. Um, now, we know pork. We might as well learn mutton. We've got, we got an absolute bunch of spare knowledge, so I'll just throw in a few new recipes as well. Uh, and yep. We'll buy all of you, and we'll buy all of you as well. 20 salt should do us for the time being, though we did just get a new pony, so let's just, let's lash out on our salt. I don't know about uh, heart disease and everything that goes along with eating too much salt in these days, so everything's heavily salted. Repair our gear, sell a dagger that we don't need. And I do have to make sure that I start my scholar research. So how about I do that at the same time? I like doing the treasure of the ancients straight off the bat. Uh, well, we're going to get our, our friend of beasts to go and be our scholar. So I'm going to move another person in on the tent. And I might put someone on the watchtower too. All right, so we've got a constitution bonus. We're coming along all right in terms of our timing. Let us go and get this ghost pack. Uh, so the main things with the ghost pack um, that you have to be concerned about are obviously the terror stacks. So having a couple of people with first aid, and we've got three, Kalik, Gabna, and Meland, our brute. No, our swordsman, there you go. Um, and they're all, all very handy with that. So first aid can get rid of terror stacks. Um, terror is obviously the, the main concern when you're fighting the ghost pack. Uh, and that's the, the body that you find that the uh, map, the um, map that you got from the trackers kind of refers to. Uh, we got some guards chasing us. I don't want them chasing us right now um, as I want to hit the ghost pack with full armor. And our blood trail leads us all the way over here. Sometimes there is a pack of boars in here as well, so you just got to be a little careful. Ah, uh, we got some deserters. Um, can we stay out of their line of sight until the ghost pack spawns? Now I'm just walking around because that uses our energy less quickly. Ah. Uh, uh, Okay, our ghost pack is spawning. Where are they in the mist, though? Over this side. I reckon we can get them. Okay, fantastic. And we got in there before our, uh, our fatigue ran out as well. Good, good, good. Our timing was close. Close. It is quite often good to do fights when your fatigue is really low. 
uh, because it does mean that you can um, uh, do the fight and then rest up after that. Okay, so we've already got 15 that we are fighting, and they are already level 5, so they're, they're a pretty solid group. Uh, with the additional spawns that we're going to get in between waves, this is going to be interesting. Interesting. If we have to run, we have to run. Uh, I'm going to try... I'm going to get, and then I'm going to try to get these people all over here. Uh, we'll put another tank in. Having a tank up here is pretty good. He can run down this way. And we'll aim to kind of take some of these guys out and put a little bit of control in on this side. In fact, we might even put two tanks over this side to begin with. And who is up first? You, who we can't see. And you, who we also can't see, both off over to the left. Alrighty, Mr. Archer. You guys will get first dibs here. Uh, so I really want to make sure we're taking out this group and protecting this flank as much as we can. Uh, so even with a crit, I'm only dealing half health on these guys. And who we got up next? One and two. All right, cool, cool. Let's us start poking and prodding away. Uh, we are going to have to be careful and manage our valor points here. Um, we definitely need to be making sure we're uh, earning as many as we're spending. All right, good start. Okay, and these guys are going to start moving now. So what we're going to do is... Let's engage this one. Uh, which means this wolf will move and get shot at least once. And also keeps... Uh, what are we doing? 11, 11 to 14. Pretty unlikely we're going to get a kill here, but... Let's see how we go. Nah, if it's not going to get a kill, not too worried about it. A swordsman is engaged. I'm not too worried. I can take a couple of hits on, on swordsman. Uh, and the main aim is to get, you know, three shots out of Gabner before Gabner's turn. Uh, okay, and now we start having these boars moving as well. So... I might let this boar engage. I'll then knock him away. Uh, run and set up a, a spear wall. So I really need, just need to make sure that I'm grouping everybody together. This boar's already moved, so I can safely run up near him. Does that get a shot? It does. Cool, cool, cool. Um, 16, 17. Oof, man. Yeah, we're going to have to be really careful with getting our, um, our hits off. Oh, and I was actually meant to use uh, them to... Get rid of that boar. Oh, well. <clears throat> okay, that swordsman. He's still okay. He's not going to get surrounded anymore, so he's not going to get over two stacks of terror just yet. Um, let's knock him away. And let's get set up so that if anything approaches this spearman, they will at least take one shot. So you can see why it's useful to make sure you've got a lot of Valor Points in the bank. Uh, you really don't want to be running low on Valor Points uh, when you're heading into a battle like this because sometimes even just the, the setup can really, really take a bit of time. Alright, cool, cool. Um, then we might run up here. Now, this wolf could go one or two ways feel like he's more likely to come around this way though, so I'm actually going to get him prepped as well. Nice. So we've managed to kill a couple, weaken an absolute bunch, and get our squad a little bit more grouped. So in terms of how we've gone for the first round, I am happy. 
Uh, we have our last character's turn now. And I'm actually going to, first of all... I don't want to attack. Uh, I'm actually going to disengage. Take a hit, that's fine. He's down to one terror um, after being up at three from, or two from two hits. Uh, because I killed a unit. So when you kill a unit, you will reduce your terror stacks. So the reason I didn't attack the wolf I was engaged with is that I have Valorous Jewel, and so if I engage with somebody, I will actually get um, a Valor Point back, which I'm keen on. Um, I'm only near one other ally, so I'm not going to use my Encouragement just yet. So we've got a couple of stacks of terror, easily managed. Where are the reinforcements coming? Over this side. Okay, 7 versus 21. Uh, so they are going to start getting kind of 2 to 3 moves for each one of mine now, which is where it starts to get a bit harder. So we take one out. We've reduced our terror on every companion. Uh, I do feel like the ghost fight is going to get reworked a little bit. So in the, in the closed beta... Uh, there was a time where um, when you um, when you were fighting the ghost back, if you killed one, the unit that did the kill had their terror reduced, which was good, appropriate. Um, and no one else. So you actually built up terror stacks significantly more on people, and it made the fight a lot more intense uh you had to manage it a lot more carefully than i think you do at the moment which i actually really enjoyed oh whoops i should have waited until wrath could kill him but oh well uh okay that's one down and we'll go over so i'm gonna have my two tanks kind of more or less in front just continue getting the valor and this is where we're going to start setting the spearmen up kind of next to and supporting them uh, and the archers behind as well for some covering fire. Okay, so I might as well wrath him. Uh, I'm going to disengage this boar so that if something else comes up and hits the swordsman, we are good. And this guy is a Valorous support unit, so he is going to run all the way up. And get some more Valor back for us. Uh, I am concerned as to when these guys are going to go. They're not going right next to each other, so we should be okay. But I want to get another archer set up as well. So let's get some more Valor back here. And set up a bit of a kill zone. And I will say that having, um, you know, having archers, having spearmen, things that can hit more than one unit on their turn, um, I guess it counts for things like warriors and whatnot as well. Uh, it can really speed these sorts of battles up um, just because they, um, uh, yeah, they can hit more enemies per turn, which is obviously going to speed it up through the amount of damage that they deal. Uh, I am just going to pause for one second... Sorry, got distracted there. My cat was at the door asking to come in. Um, I could probably edit that out, but oh well. You can you can learn that I own a cat and my cat's name is Pounce. She's a cute little thing. All right, where are we up to? Um, I feel like there's not too many over here right now, which is a good thing. But I'm also wary of um, the nightmare coming and spawning in this spot. While I've only got a couple of characters over there, I'd prefer to get these characters over and kind of grouped up with the rest. Um, so the spearmen can push someone back once they've, they're already engaged. So I'm going to let this boar run over, engage, uh, while this archer comes over to support everybody else. And also get a few extra free shots off. Uh, now this works really well, these two having switched their bows, because it means that I can now do a pushback with Kalik into Gabna's shot and get Gabna generating some additional valor points. All right, so you can see we are starting to burn through the Valor Points that we had to begin with, and we are now relying on uh, our Valor Point generation to really help us out. 
Now, there's a bunch of them over here. We've still got 16, and I can only see 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's another three in the shadows. All right. Let's get him moving away. Uh, I do want to make sure that I can actually get a hit. Once he's got on kill. Um, I might actually just get him running over and not worry too much about him using his pike wall or spear wall this round. <clears throat> Uh, he's got Valorous Support, which is great for us. Um, this boar's not going to get too close to us. But I might as well get rid of this wolf. Oh, did knock him back because of the rock. And we'll just make sure we finish next to someone. Um, oh, we've already got a spear wall and multiple archer zones laying down, covering fire. So we should be okay there. Now this is a big group of them. Against a nightmare pack, you have to be really careful because if eight of them move in a row, like they're doing here, and they can attack you, that is eight terror stacks. So you have the potential for one of your party members running uh, before you even get a chance to intervene. So this is why you want to be grouped quite tightly. I think we're quite lucky in this battlefield that we've got a couple of very narrow chokes. Uh, and I don't know, I feel like we did have something spawn over here, but maybe we didn't. So we're up to 21 enemies with the Nightmare. Our Archer Zones of Fire are already pretty good. And we're just going to start getting into it and getting rid of some of the enemies nearby. Alright, I am going to put another Spear Wall up here, but I don't want to be directly in front of a Spearman that I've got. Uh, because what can happen is that the zones will overlap and they'll both attack at once, or because the animal bases are wider, they actually won't uh, kind of move into the correct position. All right, so it's a pity Gabna went first, Kalik second. We would have earned a Valor point if it had gone the other way, but that's just the way the zones lined up there. And we should be able to funnel these guys into our two zones pretty easily here. Okay, so this Ghost Wolf is going to attack and engage us. That'll give us a Valor Point, so we don't need to engage him first. Uh, instead, what we might do is weaken up our Pork Chops over here. And then just get ready to defend our flanks. Uh, once our armor is gone, obviously we do get bleeding on them as well. Um, so just making sure that you're keeping some first aid handy for that is a, always a good idea. Okay, so Kalik still has his zone up. So definitely one of the last that we want to use. Uh, and I feel like we are going to be starting to run a little bit low on Valor Points soon. So to get around that, I'm actually going to set it up so that... Um, we might get a Kalik shot followed by a Gabna shot, and therefore a Valor Point kill. And we'll just keep chipping away at this wolf up here. So my Spearmen will hold the bottom, my tanks can hold the top. Uh, I don't think I want to spend a point on getting this guy Wrath. Not quite worth it yet. And the number of these guys running backwards is actually going to really change how easy or hard this fight is. Uh, you can have your go now. And I don't need to give people more defense at the moment, so probably should have tried to cure bleeding. 11 damage per turn is quite high. And next turn we'll get two kills on Hamad, which is good. Who else have we got to go? We've got one Spearman. It's a pity his um, Spear Wall is currently up. Uh, and then we have an absolute bunch of these guys. And the Nightmare. So the Nightmare is the one we've got to watch because uh, he does put a kind of a not quite a damage over time effect on, on you. Um, but there will come a point where we need to run certain characters together. 
Uh, now this character doesn't have a Valor Point on kill, so I'm just going to stand him there. We've got enough uh, covering fire that nothing's going to get through this gap this round. So we'll just build up a bit more of a Valor Point reserve. Alright, Hamad's starting to get a little bit lower on health. We'll have to watch that. And unfortunately, we have to cancel our turn here. Ooh, that's totally not what I meant to do. I meant to cancel the Overwatch, kill something, and then reset an Overwatch. Oh well. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. As you can see, I do make a few mistakes when playing, but not too worried. Just makes it more of a challenge, right? Alright, and the Nightmare normally hits the closest person, plus one other. So I'm kind of expecting him to go for this Spearman, uh, and then another random character. Oh wow, ran all that way forwards, that's interesting. Alright, so yep, one and two. Okay, so when the Nightmare attacks, in addition to the damage that it deals, which is straight to health, skips the armor, uh, it puts this Binding of Terror on your character. Um, if you do not end or move these two characters next to each other, both characters will suffer three Terror at the end of their turn. Uh, three Terror is a hell of a lot, and it makes it very easy for characters to run away in Terror. Uh, so we want to avoid uh, ending these characters' turn before we get rid of that debuff. Now... How do we want to play this? So, I only got this character in the way at the moment. Um, so I'm going to use them to... I don't actually want to kill that ball this round. I really want to stop them in their tracks and keep a couple of Valor Points handy. So we'll end that one. And we are going to try to take this Nightmare out as quickly as possible because the damage that the Nightmare can deal is uh, probably more than the than the other animals will be able to deal. So I've used this Spearman to really block this area off at the moment because uh, animals have that wider movement base. They can't actually get through that little gap between the rocks there, though a person could. Um... Alright, what we will do... I also like getting rid of this debuff as quickly as possible. Let's run you up and attack you. Uh, I kind of want to finish next to somebody for the extra Valor. But I don't necessarily want my Spearmen to be my frontliners, so we'll just go down to here. And I've got to make sure that I um, first aid that character. Uh, but you can see that the debuff that they had has now dropped off. Uh, and so they only have the, the bleeding or the, the other things that they used to have before. Alright, so let's first aid you. I don't know that we can... Oh, we can knock a nightmare back. Kind of good to know. Let's just do it. And as that Spearman has the bottom group covered, we'll start managing the top entrance again. Uh, so we're, again, low on Valor points. We've got a couple of ca couple of enemies low, so we're going to use our um, Valorous Victory characters to generate some Valor as the next action. As I said, we're now set up for technically able to kill two in a turn but not quite in the position to do so Abner won't necessarily get that kill hmm. might kill one get the victory point and then set up the zone for the second one Gabner will waste one of their shots. Or maybe not. Interesting. Okay, so uh, Hamad doesn't have a ton of health, but I'm still going to disengage here. So that I can move back and guarantee a kill. So just get an extra Valor point. Um, the fact that Hamad is low on health 
a little bit of a problem if the nightmare hits him. Um, so I'm kind of accepting a, a little bit of RNG risk here, I guess. Uh, but overall, I still feel pretty safe and I know I can get a heal off if need be. I still have a character with a heal available. A fly has come into my house with the cat and the cat is now trying to chase it madly around the house. Nice little valor point from Gabna. Again, setting up the zones in the correct way is, is a nice way for it to happen. Uh, and the nightmare is having a turn now. I feel like I am going to put myself out on a little limb here. We're going to engage it. We are going to maybe take a few too many valor points here. So two enemies get a turn including the Nightmare. And our Wrath is not going to do enough damage to kill, so we're going to stop at two Valor points, or two Terra stacks, sorry. Uh, and my Swordsman, I'm going to leave him here so that he is kind of in range to get to almost everyone except this Spearman uh, with a heal. So let's do that. Let's end his turn there. So we're down to 7 versus 14, so overall we're in um, in pretty good standing right now. <clears throat> Alright, Binding on Terra on Sanchion, that's fine. And our Nightmare is going down. Now, we're still at two stacks of Terra, so we've got to be careful not to keep attacking until that goes too high. And we also need to make sure that we get rid of Binding of Terra. Uh, so... Leave Santian up next. We will run forward, get rid of the binding. We will prod and get rid of the nightmare. And we'll set up a little spear wall while we're at it. Overall, I would say this fight's gone pretty well. Um, now that the nightmare's down, I consider the rest of it to be... Uh, kind of a bit of mop-up as such. Um, Hamad's the only one really at risk, but because he's a Spearman, we can keep them at bay very easily. Um, let's keep kind of this choke point moving along by just making sure that Ghost Wolf doesn't move. The boar will come in, which is a slight problem, but not, not one we can't overcome. And I probably should have killed the Nightmare and run back a little bit just so these guys weren't as, as close, but, ah, well. Uh, we can Fury kill you. We might uh, try to get rid of you. You don't. That's right. Okay, and Santin will be at a little bit of risk there, but not too much. Now, one thing we could do is we could capture a few of these. Uh, do we think it's worthwhile capturing any? Hmm. Now... Hamad, so if you're standing directly behind uh, an ally like this, border to border, and there's a human in combat, oh, hey, look at that. You can poke them. Sometimes with animals, it can be a little bit funny and you have a little bit of trouble. Uh, so if we go here, we might be able to stop an attack or two coming in. Attack might still go through because it did manage to get next to him. That's fine. I probably put Hamad a little bit too close to the front, given that he's on such low health. Now, we are running lower on our Valor points again, so we will now galvanize. Probably could have done it earlier in the fight. Uh, disengage our Spearmen and get a bunch of them in our Overwatch. I don't think anyone else is going to come in Gabner's Overwatch, so I'm just going to get 
her moving up as well. Uh, let's get her some kills. And set up some more Overwatch. Sorry, a lot of XCOM makes or leads me to calling it Overwatch. I know it's not quite the not quite the right name. Barrage. Alright, first movement, gonna get shot twice, and hopefully we'll actually be getting um a uh Galvanize buff soon. Mind you, I'm not sure why we haven't got Galvanized yet. We're seven versus eight and we don't have Galvanized. That seems a little odd. Nice. Seven versus seven and still no overwatch. It's interesting. Alright, Hermati's low on health, so we'll just kind of keep advancing and keep this damage coming in. It's interesting, so that doesn't trigger both of them. I'm kind of curious as to why, because sometimes the... There are the two of them triggered. I'll just move in and we'll pretty much hold the line now. Overall, a very smooth fight, and you can see why I really like the control party for this type of action. Uh, I'm not even going to kind of venture out to engage any further. as them running onto my weapons is doing everything that I need it to do. Now the Spearman attack will stop the Archer fire normally too. Which is a pity as we could have um Now, there is a chance to hit my own guy. Uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead with it because um, there is an achievement for hitting your own character a number of times. Uh, let's set up another barrage just because we can. And we're going to try to push this wolf into the barrage. There we go. Galvanization, finally. Took us a while. Not that we really need it now. Uh, we're going to fight them because we want to maximize our uh, our white leather gain. But I do still like doing it in the, the safest way possible. we got four guys going before they do. I know, it doesn't really matter how much damage I take now. Force of habit trying to take as little damage as possible. Uh, now, after we get out of this fight, we do have to be aware that there was that group that was right near us, so they may attack, uh, and we are um, uh, out of stamina, so out of fatigue, so we cannot run away. All right, so we got 13 white leather from that. That's not too bad. Uh, a bunch of wolf meat, a bunch of uh, pork, um, so we will have food for days now. Food for days. Uh, we managed to get a couple of titles out of that. Uh, as you are my tank, you can have some more constitution. Level 4, yep, not level 5 yet. And level 4 archer, you can have some more dexterity. Definitely more useful than a double willpower at the moment. Uh, movement reduced by 2. Sure, it's not good, but we have the gurney, don't we? Do we have a gurney yet? We have it available to build. Uh, I haven't built it yet, but I can do that now. Uh, so I won't heal it, I'll build the gurney this rest as well. So we're going to pop out of this combat and head straight into a rest. Uh, our danger level remains very low because we were just in combat. So if you just get out of combat and you attempt to rest, you will keep um, a very low threat score. Ooh. Lohan's feats have earned him the Lohan the Deft. Lohan the Deft. Deft for cooking. I guess it works, using a knife all the time. Uh, cooking up a bunch of stuff. We might save our mutton for the pork stew, which gives us the constitution. Um, 
Oh no, it's the pork that gives us the constitution. It's the mutton that gives us strength. Okay, I do like the strength bonus. Uh, particularly given that we've got the spearman. Alright, Lohan as a spearman. Damage dealer, more strength, please. Okay, so we've got our scholar on there. We've cooked our food, got our watch person out. Uh, our ponies are not near prisoners, check. It's something new that I have to look for that I had never considered before, that your prisoners might be the ones that uh, cash in on that. Alright, we don't need that. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, we got some, got some ghost leather. Uh, we finished a hunt, and we are now back to get some patches. Not sure where these deserters ended up running off to, but... Uh, whilst we're here, we might as well go and do another quest that's nearby. Uh, involving the local lords. So, we do need to get through the um, County of Arthas quests at some stage. I had said, I think, in the last video that this might be the one where we uh, we start doing those, but... Um, not yet, not yet. Okay, so... Head into the spring. Uh, we can either choose to, um, fight these guys, or dump a boar into the, the water. Um, if we support them, they're members of the Lahart army, so they're the ones that wear blue normally. And you can see the Lahart soldier down here. Um, I'm actually gonna support Vinale in this, this round. Uh, it's not something I've done before. What have we got? Legionary duelists and sappers. Alright, so these guys fight in a very similar style to us. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to build the gurney. So Hamad is not going to be not going to be moving too far. Okay, what do we got? Let's bunch our guys up over here. We've got a tanks down the bottom here. And it's the duelist's turn first. So I'm going to lock down this duelist. Uh, our tanks will be able to move up. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, and so their legionaries do a knockback. Their sap I'm um, sorry, the sappers set up a little area of effect attack. Their legionaries are really slow, by the way. Uh, and the duelists normally do a charge, uh, running through people and slowing them down. Uh, you can't make it to anyone. We've got a legionary up next, so we will lock them down too, because we can. We've got a few valor points because we've just rested, which is always nice. And our Archer Barrage ability loses a little bit of value in this fight, just because these guys have so much armor and so much guard. Um, so it's definitely not something that we want to set up early in this fight, and it's actually something that we may not set up at all. Um, I don't know, we'll see. I will reduce the, the damage. Uh, and Legionaries are actually quite good to fight with our tanks. Uh, we slowed him down even more. I won't. Uh, legionaries are quite good to fight with our tanks because they do do the knockback, which disengages them and allows us to get even more valor points from them. Uh, we'll run around. <clears throat> and what do we got? Um... Let's set up for both of you. Cool, cool. Uh, and yeah, obviously as um, the character levels increase, so with the quarter one patch that's coming up, I'm excited to see what it, content it's going to include. Um, hoping we get a little bit more, um, uh, a few more spoilers up first. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, there's been a couple of picks on Twitter, so I don't know if you follow Shiro Games on Twitter at all. Um, but yeah, they've posted a couple of picks of... Um, what the plagued boars look like, which should be pretty cool. Uh, another new new enemy to come up against. Uh, and um, yeah, super, super keen to see what it includes. But one of the big things that we already know about, obviously, is that this new region, 
uh, the region of Harag, which is where my character, the Kagala character, is it, that's his homeland. So I'm obviously uh, want to see a little bit more about that. Um, but as the level cap increases, so when we get to level seven, enemies start getting up to those levels as well. What we will start seeing is uh, a lot of characters that have high armor and high health. So the high health is going to mean that we are much more likely to see um, bleed, poison, and fire damage really come into their own, uh, as well as um, the... Mm, I don't think I want to use another... How many people can I galvanize? And then the high armor, meaning characters like the Brute, will go up in value a little bit because they have the abilities that are things like um, Armor Breaker, we're reducing the amount of armor that, or the increasing the amount of armor damage that they do. Now, I really want to get this guy out of combat, and I want to get him out of combat before the slowdown happens, um, just so I can kind of run back up into these barrages. So, I am going to disengage. Oof, took a little bit more of a hit than I expected. Uh, and then I will... Oh, yep, yeah. and also from the Sapper. That's unfortunate. Uh, and I may even just move away. That definitely was, was not the smoothest thing I could have done. And if this duelist is clever, he will hit a few of us and knock us down to dying. But we take him out as a result. Alright, we have a character that can move and i got to go and get a heal on him. Very poorly planned. Too busy talking about upcoming updates. Now, only one of my characters has heal, and he can just get there. So, whoops, that was a bit of a mistake. Alright, um... I did say I wasn't going to use Barrage much at the start. I have some spare Valor points, so I figured might as well. Uh, just tr in trying to reduce my damage by as much as possible. Mm, boom, 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 boom. Don't think I'm going to be able to attack him, but we'll set that up. So I'm curious, curious to see uh, what the, the next update brings, um, sort of interested to see if there's a bit of a combat rebalance at the same time as well. Um, Lohan has full health so he can run in and take a shot here. Um, I do feel like as we start hitting levels like 7, 8, 9, uh, particularly around 9, there's going to need to be some pretty significant rebalancing done. Uh, just because otherwise the damage over time abilities will far, far, far exceed anything that anyone else is able to achieve uh, through their conventional weapons. Uh, we'll engage him. We're still not able to kill him with Fury, so we'll just let him go. Uh, I don't want to eat into my permanent Valor points, so I am going to purposely leave them uh, leave them there. What do we got? A couple of melee classes. I'm going to run in and set up some Overwatch again with the Spearman. Uh, and you can sit out the rest of the fight, out the back. Do have one sapper running around the back? Interesting. Uh, I'm going to take a shot potential to hit my own unit. Again, on purpose. I haven't won the fight yet, but obviously pretty confident that I will. Ooh, that was a good shot. 
This duelist may hit a number of people and is now in behind us as well. It's all good, we'll lock him down for the next turn. And fights against these guys can always uh, take a little bit longer than you're maybe hoping for, just because of the armor primarily. Uh, and I guess trying not to take too much damage. So the knockback um, does mean that they don't get engaged, uh, so you don't generate kind of quite as many valor points from a fight like this. Uh, we might as well just go up and fury him. And the sapper run back this way. So can we get down that way? Nope, we're slow down. Uh, and we'll just try to keep these guys at bay now. Uh, I'm going to get my archer to take the hit. And I'll try not to shoot myself anymore in the back just yet. Gap is a little bit narrow and I've kind of limited myself there. I do engage this time because he can't get knocked back any further. One little thing you can do, I guess, to try to make it a little bit better. And I don't need to use Barrage, so I shan't. Not too sure if this sapper will stay here or move because he's being targeted. We will find out, I guess. I'm going to try and keep my Valor. But the Dust still doesn't give us... Um, the option to just finish the battle. I feel like I must have a team with very low willpower because it seems to be taking quite a long time to get galvanized at the moment. Ooh, and we get some nice blue two-star battle plate. That might actually be an upgrade for a couple of characters. And we are not throwing our, our pig into the water here. So we will get a little prompt with the fight here. Um, however, because we've um, defeated the bandits, we just get a little bit of a gold reward and some progression. Now, that did say 50. Little bug. Might report that one. Okay, so in our camp, the first thing I want to do before I forget is make myself a gurney. Thank you very much. Let's put that down. Uh, what wound have you got? This unit can no longer deal a critical hit. Look, you're not my not my main damage dealer anyway. Amad, you can go and do that. And we can deal with slightly reduced um, campfire happiness. Okay, our protector has 1926 versus 2146. That is a huge upgrade. Fantastic. And that's one we made ourselves. Cool, cool. cool. Uh, sometimes the guards' shields can actually be substantially better than ours as well. 
though it does not look like it this time. Lose the ability to grant protection, that's fine. Uh, protection's probably a little bit better than four armor, actually. Cool! Alright, even though we don't need to rest, I just thought I'd better do that whilst I remembered that I needed to. Okay, we're going to head back. Uh, we are wanted, so we do need to be careful of guard patrols, particularly as our fatigue gets a bit lower. If we can't run away from them, that will be bad. There's one patrol here, so we might rest before we head back over the bridge. What we could do is we could head over to do this quest at the same time, back to hand the hunt in, maybe the bandit's lair, and then back to Korsha. So we have got... Oh, yep, yeah, we do have a guard patrol after us. I think we are going to head this way and rest up before they turn around and chase after us again. All right, we need some alcohol. Uh, we can do otherwise mostly mutton and a mushroom. We do have a 30% danger level. I'm worried that the guards will turn around and come after us. And they do. Alright. We will fight them. This will help our crime path level up a little bit more. So let's take them on. We do not have much armor. Um, so fingers crossed. They are not the worst squad in the world for us to fight. Hmm... Where's that main dude? Oh, he's a long way over the back there. Okay, we're gonna get our whole party up this way, first of all. Do I have anyone that can reach him? Really don't think I'm going to. Nope. All right, Hamad, let's do this. Who's up first? Our foot soldier now. They normally cannot move very far. However, with their improved running abilities. Ooh, and he gets in behind. Alright, and these three will take a while to get to us, so we should actually be pretty good on this fight. Uh, I might wait for the archer to run in a little, and then I'll take my turn to, to move up and uh, take that part of the fight. Uh, you and you are up next. The phalanx soldier won't engage anyone. I don't really want this lieutenant coming along and doing too much damage, so... I will prep to get rid of him. Uh, we do have the spear down here, so if they come too close I might be able to chuck that at them as well. Ouch. Um, we don't have much Valor. Uh, let's try to build a little bit of that up. So I purposely don't do a spear wall there. <clears throat> Yeah, they will get to us faster than I'd otherwise like, but not much we can do about it. And if we actually get our archer coming down this way too, we get a triple galvanized. Look, I'm getting three is good. I could have organized it or waited and waited to get four, but don't mind too much. And another one to finish the turn is five. You can see our uh, our willpower is super low. I might have a look at my willpower stats after this fight, just out of curiosity more than anything. Um, 
Now, I am actually going to move up here so that this foot soldier engages Aurelis. Uh, just so that my faster soldier can run up and engage the captain. God, he's got some movement. Uh, so the reason I think he ran a little bit further this way is to try to get closer to more of his own squad. Uh, it is something that the captains do sometimes, which is an interesting little move to see. Uh, but obviously it would have been more sensible for him to run away. I'm kind of curious whether we'll see some uh, AI improvements around that kind of stuff as well. I'm going to try to get rid of the captain as quickly as possible so that this spearman doesn't get any uh, destabilization attacks on us. Um, on kill ability, probably not going to kill anyone this turn. And I'm going to put this archer, Gabna, in the way for the spearman to attack her. Hmm, up first, eh? Not gonna get a kill, so that's fine. Let's lock this guy down. And control against a small but heavily armoured group is actually much easier than um, control against, you know, lots and lots of small enemies in some ways. Uh, just because I can quite easily lock them down on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, when we start fighting rats, that's where I really need my my pikemen to be hitting a couple per turn and my spearmen to be hitting, you know, three or four per turn. <coughs> uh, otherwise, they will overwhelm me very, very quickly. So I'll get set to... Uh, I should have finished next to him. Oh, well. Uh, I'll get set to prod him next turn unless someone else comes up and gets a little bit closer faster. And... Five damage. That is very low damage. This Phalanx Soldier is, is dealing a substantial amount uh, I kind of want to guarantee that Gabner's going to get the kill shot, so I will just do that. Uh, if Wrath could do it, maybe I'd consider it. Uh, and then I think Gabner can come down this way as well. Hmm. Spearman should run over and attack this guy. Uh, we don't need to skip the turn. We can do some attacking. And I might even just give these guys guards so they can hold out on this side for as long as I need to. Some of these folks are actually easier and faster to kill than the two over here, so that's that's why that's going on. I uh, probably should have used my Spearman here to engage that Foot Soldier. Or definitely should have, sorry. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. He should die when he moves. I wonder if I run next to him, will he move, though? Let's see what happens. I would, don't have to worry about it. Who have we got left? Let's go with you. 
Alrighty. Do, 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 do. Uh, run you away a little bit because you're on low health, Kalik. Uh, Melende is using her uh, ability to reduce the amount of damage being dealt, so should be fine for a few turns. Uh, I kind of want those guys to run forwards before I get rid of my archer ability, but I'm not going to. I'm going to have to cancel it. Um, well, let's get, get set up for some more. And we're out of Valor. Oh, well, we can pick up some more next turn. This is why I did want to make sure in the fight uh, against the guards in the in the well battle that we didn't use all of our valor because uh when you use it all that is when you suddenly realize you need it all uh so not having valor here does cause a small problem except for the fact that we can kill someone and generate one Uh, we're out again. You guys are under attack. That's fine. You're going to keep him locked in place. That's good. Abna cannot get a kill there. So let's do a basic knockback. And end turn. Uh, we do need to weaken this guy. Uh, otherwise, it is possible that Melende will get hit and killed. See, if we had not weakened, Melende would be down. They're going to have to send some support in that direction. Uh, now, Hamad is going to get hit and hurt here. Uh, would have been better if I could save a Valor Point, as we couldn't. That is fine. Uh, let's just actually feel like this lieutenant might run back and hit a couple of them. Let's see what happens. I don't think we can do 33. No, we can't do 33 damage. Let's run back and start helping out. These two archers are at a small risk of being attacked by this lieutenant over here. No, nah, just goes in against the spearmen. Great. Maybe because he had armor. Who knows? I haven't learned all the AI programming yet. Um, at some point, I guess it would be nice to know exactly who's going to be attacked when. But uh, I have a pre like I have a good enough sense overall that it's not too big a problem. All right, I better start working on these foot soldiers and stuff. Uh, we got two of them going. Let's lock them down. You're already in combat there, so... Uh, Melende is going to go down. I don't think we can get a heal or two than this round. So we'll just get one close by for next round. It'll have to do. Even had we run in and thrown a heal in, wouldn't have actually helped this round. As long as we don't accidentally shoot ourselves. One health. Should have done that first. Get the galvanized, then done the shot. Oh well, oh well. Uh, and if, if killing the phalanx soldier gets us a, a win, I will be taking it at this point in time. I hadn't really wanted to fight the guardsmen, but we've made it work. 
A little bit of low health all over the place. Nothing we can't handle, though. Nothing we can't handle. Let's go for a bit of a surround bonus. And just net ourselves the win. Captain's Double. Two movements. That's a very, very nice set of light armor. It is significantly better than anything we've got. Uh, we now have five companions with wounds. Uh, so we will have to start healing them. At least a little bit. We've got plenty of potions and like plenty of uh plenty of flowers, plenty of medicine, so it's not too bad. Might just get rid of a couple of the main ones. There we go. It still says five out of five even if you use a couple manually like that. Uh just something to note. Alright, two, three, twenty-six. Lose a tiny bit of crit, gain some willpower and armor. Uh, 23, 23, so it's better for you. Alright, cool, cool. Uh, and so we did end up using a chunk of our, our rested experience there too. Uh, do we have the key for that? No, we forgot to pick the key up from Tiltron. All right, I think if we head around and do this main quest. Return to the tracker to hand in a, um, I think we've got some more guards to fight here, do we? We do. Oh, it's a whole bunch of guards. Hmm. Legionary, sappers, duelists. Definitely not going to be a quick fight. All right, I might leave that for another video. Uh, what I might do, um, I'm going to post a comment at the um, at the top of this one. So I think there's a bunch of stuff that's going to be coming up pretty soon in this run um, where it becomes a little bit more grindy, I think. Uh, so, you know, so far in most of the videos, I've tried to have something that is a little bit of a point of interest. Uh, such as the tomb or the ghost pack or some really discrete goals that you can see me working towards with a little bit of the grinding that's going to be coming up I feel like it's going to be um, much more boring viewing uh, and uh, honestly probably a little bit more boring to try to come up with some commentary for at the same time uh, because it's going to be very samey so you've already seen me fight a bunch of uh, duelists and sappers and whatever this this video um, I don't know that I necessarily want to be doing too many of the same sort of types of videos per, or same, same types of fights per um, individual run. And then because as the fights get larger and harder, they will all take longer as well. Um, so I don't really necessarily want to show too many long fights. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that in a way that means, you know, you still see how the run is progressing. Maybe what we'll do is I'll show you the start of the fight. I'll complete the fight and I'll pick the commentary up from when the fight ends, just kind of highlighting if anything interesting happened in there. Um, so we'll see how we go. Okay, so here we uh, earn Reinforced Layer of the Falcon and we actually get uh, one of the runes ourselves, plus two dexterity, plus two critical hit, which is great. And we also learn how to make that recipe ourselves as well, which is very nice. So the basic layers give you plus two of a stat, um, plus two strength, plus two uh, dexterity for the one over here. And the upgraded ones give you the, the stat plus another bonus as well. So dex and critical hit. Uh, and I think the strength one is like strength and armor from memory. Now our infantryman, he does have a thing with one on it. Uh, look, I am going to give it to him. Extra dexterity it always helps. Um, 
a plus two dexterity one is probably better on the character that I want to do the killing. So we'll go up to 27 dex on you and stay on 23 on you, that's fine. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So we have learnt the warrior's strength one, so we can go and make some, some extra leather there. That'll be good. We do want to try to craft, so the more patches you craft, um, which one is it in? Is it in power and might? The armor lay is created. By the time you create 50 armor lays, you can then remove them from armor as well. Um, which over the longer course of a game, once you've got six regions and that kind of thing under your belt, and you start making tier two, tier three, maybe patches, uh, which again, something I might see coming. Uh, obviously being able to remove those layers becomes more and more useful as well. Now we have a bit over a hundred fangs. The animal essence oil, increasing extra damage to animals, not something I particularly need and it's worth 200. So we're gonna leave that with him for now. Um, all right, we may save this one here. Let's have a quick look at the bandit camp. What have they got? We've taken out all their skulls. So there's only 10 of them there. I reckon we will start the next round with a bandit lair fight. Um, 10 of them should be pretty easy to knock over. We are very close to getting our crime path to level four now. So we've bumped it up to 149 out of 170. Um, that's either one more good theft or one more fight with the guards and we'll be there. Uh, so maybe what we'll do go and steal this and then maybe the next video will just be a short one um, kind of going up against the guards uh, going up against the bandit layer getting a few layers uh, and then maybe one more fight against a phantom pack we'll see how we go uh, let's try steal something small just to bump us up to wanted uh, I'm gonna steal the traps to show you what traps do how about that I don't think we've looked at traps before and how they uh, they form part of it okay so this run we were successful against the ghost pack we completed a hunt uh we completed a little bit of the main story of Korsha, and we took a couple of kind of longer and harder fights so i hope it was an enjoyable video uh let me know if you could hear the background noise um have a great evening and if you liked the video please remember to hit like and subscribe that is kag over and out